Hi, my name is John Kim, and one of my students uh, from Buena High School uh, posed this question on me. And he wanted to make, uh, me to figure out what the arc length, uh, using calculus of course, uh, of a hyperbolic cosine function, COSH stands for hyperbolic cosine, and what that is, and um, from x0 to 1. Well, before we get started, um, I had to do a little bit of referencing on this because I've never worked with hyperbolic cosines before. Well, it's not, I've never worked with it, but I kind of know what it looks like. Um, I know some of the equations, uh, but I had to actually look it up. So why don't you guys look it up too as well? We, uh, it took me about two minutes to figure out how to do this. A hyperbolic cosine of 2x is equal to e to the 2x plus e to the minus 2x all over 2. I had to look this up first. Um, that's one of the equations you're going to need. And um, we also know we have to find the derivative of the cosine function. Um, the derivative of the cosine function hyperbolic of 2x is equal to uh, the derivative of the hyperbolic cosine is sine. So it's sine, hyperbolic sine of 2x times the derivative of that, which is 2. The derivative of 2x is 2. So that's one information that you need. Um, we also know that hyperbolic cosine square root of x minus uh, hyperbolic sine square root of x is equal to 1. Um, and we have to figure out um, what the derivative of this is now uh, and this of course so y prime is equal to the derivative of a constant is 0 the derivative of 1 half hyperbolic cosine of 2x is being 1 half times 2 hyperbolic sine of 2x these twos cancel goes away um, and the arc length formula L is equal to integral from A to B, which is going to be 0 to 1 in our case, from 0 to 1, that's our A, that's our B right there, of square root of 1 plus F prime of X, and that quantity squared DX. Okay, that's the arc length formula. Make sure you know how to use that uh, hyperbolic uh, um, the arc length formula. We also know uh, that uh, f prime squared of x happens to be sine uh, hyperbolic sine of 2x so f prime of x quantity squared happens to be sine squared hyperbolic of 2x and if you move the right side over here and subtract 1 f prime of x quantity squared becomes cosine hyperbolic squared of 2x. I have to put 2x over here because it's 2x, 2x is the same thing and then minus 1. That's equal to hyperbolic sine squared of x. So I'm going to put that function in there. The one's going to cancel with this and so you're going to end up with the arc length integrated from 0 to 1 this time. Lower limit to the low, uh, right limit. Always from the left. You're sweeping from left to right and then the square root of the ones cancel with this cosine square root of 2x dx the hyperbolic of the cosine, um, uh, excuse me the square of the square root becomes the absolute value that becomes integration from 0 to 1 of the absolute value of hyperbolic cosine of 2x uh, excuse me, dx let me get this out of the way first so there you have it so far um, we're going to integrate this. Uh, before we integrate that though, um, we will get rid of the absolute value because the cosine, this e to the 2x is neg never negative. e to the minus 2x is never negative. The minus actually goes to the denominator, so it's never negative. The hyperbolic cosine is always going to be a positive value right here. So we can get rid of the absolute value. The arc length is equal to integration from 0 to 1 of cosine hyperbolic 
of qx dx. And we also know that the derivative of the hyperbolic cosine is sine, the, the, integral, the uh, integral of the hyperbolic cosine is going to be sine. And so that's going to come out to be um, sine hyperbolic of 2x. And we're going to evaluate it from 0 to 1. And so we're going to look at this right here. The hyperbolic sine is just a minus in front instead of a plus right there. So that becomes e to the 2x minus e to the minus 2x all over 2. What we could have done at this stage, if you don't know that that's true, we could have actually integrated um, integral from 0 to 1 of e to the 2x plus e to the minus 2x all over 2 dx and we could have taken the half out and we could have integrated this or end up with the same answer over here okay and we're going to evaluate it from 0 to 1 so we're going to plug in 1 in here so that becomes e squared minus e to the minus 2 all over 2 minus e to the 0 minus e to the 0 all over 2 e to the 0 is 1 minus 1 is 0 so that's going to go away that's almost kind of like our final answer e squared minus 1 over e squared divided by 2 we're going to bust that fraction multiply by e squared to the numerator e squared to the denominator e squared times e squared is e to the fourth minus 1 because dc squares cancel all over 2e squared. Whoops, let me get that. So that should be your final answer. Um, you can check it using your calculator. Let me try checking with my calculator a little bit. I don't have a hyperbolic function on my calculator. So what I'm going to do is um, let's see if I have a program here. Oh, no, maybe I should make a program. I have trapezoid rules, slow fields, all that stuff, but I don't have it. So uh, I'll let you uh, go on this one. This is the answer. So let's recap what we just learned a little bit. Uh, we're going to do the case of the hyperbolic function and the arc length. The arc length function is this right here. The length is integration from A to B, from left to right. There's my left and just my right. So we're going to try to figure out what this arc length is. And here's the formula. Uh, I'm going to write it really nice and big for you. It's the square root of 1 plus the quantity f prime of x squared dx. Okay, That's your basic um, arc length formula. It comes from the Pythagorean theorem. You can look it up too if you want, but that should be pretty basic. You have to have a definition of the hyperbolic cosine. It's going to be a plus here. If the uh, if it's hyperbolic sine, there's just a minus right over there. I also had to reference this one right here. Look it up on this one. The hyperbolic cosine uh, squared minus one it, minus the hyperbolic sine squared of x is equal to one. At this stage. Um, instead of finding der derivative, actually I could have just plugged it into here and then squared it and could have worked it out that way too. It would have been a little bit more roundabout. But hopefully that will give you enough of how to do some of these hyperbolic functions. Take care guys. Peace out.